really, really fed up that they keep putting me on after Emma Cooper. How can you follow that? And how fantastic was Lisa? Give them another round of applause, please. So how's everyone doing? Good? Fantastic. So who am I? My name is Ange, Ange Lochran. And yeah, I'm from the UK, but I haven't actually lived there since I was 21 and I'm now 38. I've been lucky enough to live in some fantastic places around the world. Egypt, Jamaica, Belgium, Holland. Anyone from Holland in the room? Yeah. And I finally settled in the Canary Islands. And actually, when I first arrived in Spain, I had studied Spanish, but I hadn't, I hadn't mastered Spanish. And I hadn't spoke enough Spanish to get a job. And I love being an employee. I always loved every job that I ever had. But actually, when I came to Spain, I couldn't get a job. Um, so I began cleaning. In the daytime, I was a cleaner. And in the evening, I was working in a bar. And I loved those jobs. I've loved every job I've ever had. But I became that good at the cleaning because I always apply myself and become the very best at everything I do. I became that good at the cleaning. I accidentally started a cleaning company. I accidentally grew that company to one of the biggest on the island. And I did that. I put my heart and soul into it. I, I loved it. And we built a phenomenal business. Um, we then started some other companies alongside that, and I still have those companies today. But actually, over those years of building the business, although I got lots of great things from it, amazing houses, amazing cars, the Louis Vuitton luggage, the Rolex watches, what I didn't get was time. I didn't own the business, the business owned me. The busier we got in the business, the bigger the premises had to be. The bigger the premises had to be, the bigger the overheads had to be. The bigger the business was, the more staff we needed. The more staff we had, the more problems we got. And I started to think I need to do something else. I'm feeling a little bit trapped. I mean, you've heard that before, right? I think Lisa said it. But I was actually a little bit unemployable because who would employ one of the biggest business owners on the island to go back and work as a cleaner or in their bar or in their travel agency? I was pretty much a high risk because what if I stole their customers or stole their ideas or started up again in, as a competitor? But anyway, during that time, I met somebody on Facebook. She built a relationship with me via a group that we were in regarding um, something to do with fitness. And she added me as a friend. I noticed, you know when somebody adds, adds you as a friend on Facebook, the first thing you do is start looking at all their photos. You have a good nosy, don't you? See what they've been up to. And before you know it, you're on their sister's, brother's, cousin's holiday photos from Barcelona 2007. So I was having a good look on her page, this lady called Kate. And I noticed she was using something called an aloe toning kit. Have you heard of that? Well, I hadn't, but I thought it looked fantastic. Listen to what I said. I, no I said, I noticed she was using the aloe toning kit. She wasn't putting a photo of it online. She was using it. I asked her, could I buy one? I loved the product. She showed me the business presentation, and I joined. What happened since in the past five years? I now have time because I don't have to work seven days a week in my companies. I put an operations manager in and I work from home, from my poolside, because I'm now a diamond sapphire manager with 12,500 case credits. All of those things that you can see on the screen, I don't need to read them out because it's a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> because actually, what I have done was not hard and it's nothing special. And all of you can do it too. You know, I first stood on stage at the Global Rally in Hawaii. I think it would be 2013. I hope I've got that right. And the Global Rally in Hawaii in 2013 was my first speaking gig. Some of you may have seen that training, in the Facebook training. And I'll let you into a little secret. 
I'll let you into a little secret. I had not qualified for that rally. That year, I was a senior manager in 2013, and I had done 1,349 case credits. But I had got in the wild card way of chairman's bonus, and I had no idea how I got there. But I was on stage speaking on social media. And you know what, like Efke said earlier, what I said in that 20-minute training is all you actually need, and I don't want to repeat that again. Because still, I think that people aren't watching and implementing those very, very basic bits of advice. And it's so, so basic. So just go back and have a look at that one. And let's take, through some, let's take you through some do's and don'ts. People are still scared of using social media. It's the most simple thing in the world. When you take away the fact that you are behind a computer or behind a telephone, if you take that away and just realize it's people to people, that's all you need to know. It's not complicated. You shouldn't get all confused. It's a great opportunity to network, but it can't replace face-to-face -face networking. All of the phenomenal leaders that you've seen on stage today built their businesses offline. Yes, FK and um, the next chap you're going to meet use social media as a tool, but they just use it as an additional tool. Face-to-face -face networking is what you should actually be doing. So let's take you through some do's and don'ts. Who watches Breaking Bad, Walking Dead, any of those big series, and you, you watch it week after week, and you get really excited at the end of the episode. You've got to wait another week to see what happens. And why do we watch those things every week? because we're interested in the storyline and we're interested in the characters and we like to follow what they've been doing. You need to make your social media like the next Breaking Bad, the next Walking Dead, the next big series. People need to follow your story. Know your audience, who are you talking to? A mistake a lot of people in Forever make is they, they present their social media to other FBOs you're not presenting it to FBOs. You should be doing that in your groups. You should be speaking to your FBOs in your groups. You shouldn't be speaking to FBOs on your public profiles. What you should be doing is speaking to your audience of people that may use your products and may be prospects. So that's the first mental switch that you need. Tell your story and introduce characters. All your posts should always be either educational, exciting, inspiring. Your social media is like your shop front. And as you walk around this shopping center, you will be attracted to go into different shops based on their window displays. So that's what your social media is, and that's how you will attract people to you. So is your social media attractive? Is it vibrant? Is it colorful? I've, I've skipped ahead there. Um, your pictures should always be your own. So don't copy other people's pictures. We've all got a smartphone, right? If you're not using it for your business, it's a dumb phone. So learn how to take photos and learn how to upload them yourself to social media. Don't share other people's stuff. Because you are what makes your business special. The thing that you've got that no one else in this room has is that you are you. You are the special thing here. You're the secret. That secret that you're all looking for, it's you. So be yourself. You're what makes the business special. The PPPs, keep it positive, professional, and polite. And I'll go into a few ways that you can do that later on. And don't forget that you're always representing Rex Morn. Before I post on social media, I think, would Rex approve of this? If Rex had a look at my social media, would he be proud that I'm representing the family in the right way? Be real and be authentic. Again, this goes back to being you. It's all about you. Call to action. I see the most phenomenal posts from a lot of you in this room, but they're missing that little thing, and that's the instruction. People like to be told what to do. We like to be told we're quite simple and we need a little bit of an instruction. Now, on social media, that's the call to action. That is your instruction to someone and what you want them to do. 
So maybe you've posted that you are um, having a fantastic time in Johannesburg and you've put a load of pictures up. What you want to put on the end of that is, would you like to be here next year? Drop me a WhatsApp on this number and I can show you how. Have a look at this link. Send me a message. Those are your call to actions. So don't forget to instruct people what you want to do. You know, the whole Noah's Ark thing, really, if Noah built that boat, he wouldn't just sit there and wait for, for the animals to come two by two, really, would he? I know how hard it is just to get my dogs in off after a walk, and I've only got four of them. You have to go out and fetch them in. So that's what you have to do with social media. It's not if you build it, they will come. It's you build it, and then you go and get them. Network and support your local community. Always use small, independent businesses for everything that you do in your local community. Shop local and support your local businesses. Somebody was saying to me, well, how can I make this work for my business? First of all, you should never, ever expect anybody to support you if you're not supporting them. So in my village, I use the local printers. I don't use Vistaprint or Moo whatever they're called, Moo.com, or any of the big online companies, I use my local printers for my business cards. And when I'm happy with the service, I post about it and I tag them into my social media so that they can get other customers. Um, I use a small local company to clean my car. I use um, a small independent lady to do my nails in her independent salon. I don't go to the big chains. I support small local businesses. And in turn, they support me. Again, don't have a dumb phone, have a smartphone. Make sure that you are uploading what's going on in your life. Not absolutely everything. I mean, there are only so many times we want to see your lasagna per week, but there is we as people are nosy, we're intrigued, and we want to have a little peek in people's lives. That's why we watch these reality TV shows, because we're nosy. So don't forget to share. Don't be shy. Don't think I'm not interested, and you are. I stalk many of you on social media. I have a good nosy at your profiles. I might not like your posts, but I'm there watching. It's really important that you understand the compliance rules with regards to your forever business from your country, because the effect of you getting that wrong could affect every single one of us in this room. So really go and make a point of contacting your office and finding out what the compliance is with regards to online advertising, what you can and can't say, particularly medical claims and um, earnings claims and things like that, and make sure that you are leading the way and being completely compliant. Don't spam. What is spam? So spam is um, when you are constantly posting things like, join my team, join my team, join my team, when you are tagging people into posts that you, you haven't asked them to be tagged in, when you are opening a group on Facebook and adding everybody to it, that is just rude. Would you open your front door of your home, grab a stranger in and make him sit down and have a cup of tea? You'd be arrested. And that's the same as when you open a Facebook group and add everyone into it. It's just rude, it's not polite, it's spam. Sending people endless message after message after message on social media. Copy and paste, copy and paste. There is no room for that in our business. We're in a person-to-person -person relationship building business. So make sure you're not spamming people. Don't be negative or share negative pictures or videos. No moaning, no bitching. Am I allowed to say that? No, I've just done it. Um, I see a lot of you, uh, a lot of people sharing things about um, animal cruelty or, you know, um, political things that they feel strongly about and horrible images. You know, rather than share images of animal cruelty, why don't you get, get off your butt, go down to your local animal sanctuary and volunteer and make a contribution to your local community and post about that.
Google is your friend, but stop copying and pasting stuff that you find on Google. When you want to promote Clean9, the first thing you do is you go to your product center, or you go online and you order yourself a Clean9. You don't go to Google and type in Clean9 photos. OK, so it's all about you and your personal use of the products. Do you remember what I said, how my upline recruited me? She was using the Allo toning kit and sharing her experience online. Had she have just posted a stock picture from Google of the Allo toning kit, I'd have scrolled straight past it. Don't use it as your only tool. You know, I saw um, the sister of Emma Cooper get off her plane, walk past the shop, um, catch the eye of one of the ladies in the shop here in the shopping mall, and she said, Ange, it's lovely to see you, but I really need to talk to that lady because I used to own a salon once, and I know she's really busy and our opportunity can help her. I'm going to go and give her my number. She was tired. She just got off the plane. That's what networking is, never missing an opportunity to help somebody. Don't be false or fabricate your business or your lifestyle. You'll hear people say, fake it till you make it. That's not pretend that you're making loads of money. That's not pretend that you've got this awesome lifestyle. Really, faking it till you're making it is faking the confidence. I was saying earlier that, you know, Diana Page, when I first started speaking, she was my idol. And I used to stand behind the stage, petrified, and I would say in my head, I'm Diana Page. I'm Diana Page. I'm Diana Page. I would trick myself to thinking that I was Diana Page. And I can't believe I never, over those years, got on the stage and went, hi, I'm Diana Page. <laughs> so don't be false and fabricate things. Because do you know what? That is going to come and bite you in the butt at some point. Don't use forever jargon. So this goes back to me saying, no, your audience. Your audience are not FBOs. Your audience are people that have no idea what a case credit is, no idea what an eagle manager is, no idea what a global rally is, no idea what a supervisor is, no idea, no idea what a biz op meeting is, a BP, a business presentation, a success day. So take those words out and think how you can be more descriptive so that people that are looking that don't know about forever understand. Don't oversell or undersell the products. The products are fantastic enough. Your own use and your own experience of them, your honest use and experience of them is enough. Don't undersell the products. I'm talking about price here. Within policy, and this will be reinforced pretty soon, it was explained to us with the executive GLT the other day, we are not permitted to advertise products at a lower price than the SRP, su suggested retail price. And it's up to you, the leaders of this company in this room, to pass that down to your teams and to monitor it within your teams. OK? It's your job. Are you with me? Don't be little. That's talk down. Don't talk down other companies or people. I have seen posts where people are comparing our product with somebody else's, comparing our marketing plan with somebody else's comparing your lifestyle with somebody that's got a nine to five. It's not acceptable. There is no place for that within forever. I see a lot of people posting posters on their Facebook that say things like, one day you'll ask me how I live like I do, and I will say I tried to show you. It's just rude and it's arrogant. Remember I told you at the start of this, I loved every job I ever had. I fell into business. I never wanted to be an entrepreneur or a business owner. I loved my nine to fives. Some people feel trapped in their own businesses. Some people feel trapped in their nine to fives. And if we can help them, that's fantastic. We believe we've got a better way. But you don't bel belittle somebody that actually enjoys going and doing their job. My boyfriend is a pilot. He has wanted to be a pilot since he was a little boy. He grew up drawing planes, watching planes. He has his dream job. He loves it. He goes, he flies a plane, he comes home, he doesn't have to do anything else. That's perfect for him. 
the husband of FK, who you saw earlier, he said to me backstage, ever since I was two years old, I wanted to be a pilot. Ever since I was two years old, I wanted to work for a Dutch airline. He said, we don't have to work for anyone else anymore, but I'd still do it because I love it, and I can't see myself ever leaving KLM. I really admire that. So don't talk down people that still want to keep their professions, that still want a nine to five, that aren't interested in our opportunity. <laughs> be consistent. So when you get started with this, be consistent. I um, have taken a little bit of time out recently because sadly, um, my dad was killed in a horrific cycling accident. Uh, exactly six months ago today, and um, I took some time out. But what I did is on my business page, on my, on my Facebook business page, I scheduled all of my posts until June. So I decided what posts I was going to make so that I didn't just disappear off social media. So quotes and pictures and interactive posts. And on Facebook, on your business page, you can put what day and time you want those to appear. So I was never offline. So to my customers and to my prospects and to forever FBOs who follow me for inspiration, I didn't disappear. So no matter what's happening in your life, be consistent on your social media. So many people do it for a short period of time and then something stops them and they, they don't, they're not consistent or they think it's not working. It is, people are watching. And don't forget, it's not about how many likes you get, it's about how many lives you change.